smart grids as uh, being a critical infrastructure, they are uh, to a large extent also distributed by nature. And uh, in such settings, uh, communication is often required to be able to uh, have elements in the system that interact in synchronized and organized uh, matter. Uh, for example, subsystem A may need to react upon events that happen in subsystem B or vice versa. At the same time, uh, critical infrastructure are often characterized by uh, deadlines uh, due to due to their con uh, connection to the physical world and the properties of the physical world, which a critical infrastructure like smart grids interacts with. So the figure that you see uh, here uh, is an example of two uh, communicating physical devices located at different uh, geographical and uh, network locations. And these two entities could, for example, be an AMI system uh, that has to interact with the remote control units located at uh, uh, strategic points along the system. So the, 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 the data that is required to be passed from A to B and vice versa has to undergo a long way through several routers due to the packet switched uh, approach that we have today. And uh, at each uh, passing point, which is the router uh, in this case, the, the, the received data needs in, uh, inspection to decide which uh, router may, um, uh, the, the packet should go to the next. So, uh, this may not always be the same for all packets, even though their uh, source, uh, sources and the destinations are, at this, uh, are the same, because uh, as clever uh, traffic load balance algorithms may be applied to avoid uh, congestion among the routers. So, uh, moving forward, uh, as, a as a data packet uh, route uh, example, uh, as you can see in the figure here, uh, as data going up and down, uh, yes, as is going up and down at in the different levels of the OSI model, in some parts the packet needs to be uh, addressed at the network level, while in others only a link uh, level is required. Uh, but of course, it, uh, it is clear that each hop takes some time for the routers to process packets. And this leads to an end-to-end -end delay, even though we experience the communication as a direct communication between A and B that we saw in the previous figure as well. And this end-to-end uh, -end delay depends on many factors, such as um, um, the quality of each link between routers. Uh, it also depends on the network conditions. Uh, there may be uh, bottlenecks between some routers. The routers, uh, through which the data packets are being sent. It also depends on that. This is not controlled by the application itself, but it is impacted uh, by the by the uh, decisions uh, made by the network itself. So these factors uh, are also means uh, uh, also mean these these factors also mean that the end-to-end -end delay usually uh, shows uh, highly stochastic behavior rather than a des desirable deterministic behavior. And even the changes, uh, it even changes over time. For example, in some parts of the network, uh, there is more traffic during work hours than in the night times or weekends. So uh, this complexity of intercommunication needs uh, needed to transport data from A to B uh, illustrates some key problems that critical applications uh, have when dealing with uh, communication over networks today. Um, there's, I would also say that there is no uh, or very little control of the data streams going between A and B. When routers receive a significant amount of traffic, they may start to drop the incoming packets. Although we have uh, uh, we have some uh, transport layer protocols, for example, uh, TCP, you might have heard of it, that aims at providing reliable transport of uh, reliable transport by ensuring retransmission of mission, uh, missing packets. But this retransmission uh, is at the cost of what? It is at the cost of end-to-end uh, -end delay because it first needs to detect missing packets and then ask for the retransmission. And there's another protocol called a UDP, user's data ground protocol, that offers uh, to, to send data with uh, <laughs> cross fingers 
uh, that it appears at the receiving side. So in that case, uh, the data, the, the application must be able to tolerate the packet losses actually. Therefore, uh, some of the key challenges that communicate systems fa communication systems face, and even concerning only two entities communicating uh, to support critical applications are not necessarily only the classical data throughput, but definitely also the latency and reliable communication are on the, on top of the list. So these key requirements are often assumed because they are uh, they are to a large uh, extent. Um, somewhat hidden to the everyday user. But as communication developers, we uh, need to take these issues seriously if critical infrastructures shall be supported by the uh, existing communication technologies. Um, moving a step forward as uh, a further complication, uh, it is also to be kept in mind that networks are heterogeneous and full of new and legacy systems. The figure that you see on your right uh, shows a conceptual example of how different devices and applications uh, may be connected by a large set of network of networks. So the heterogeneity covers some challenges uh, that may limit uh, some use cases, for example, um, in order to communicate between two entities, an addressing scheme is required, which is a basic requirement for uh, any type of communication. And the most prominent addressing scheme today is the IP addressing. In principle, all addresses should be uniquely identified um, in order for uh, packets to be sent to the right destination at all times. But when the Internet Protocol version 4, uh, IP version 4 was designed and implemented, uh, the space allow, uh, allocated for, uh, for, for the address in the protocol allowed for only approximately uh, four, around 4.5 billion unique devices. Well, uh, at the time of development, uh, that was enough. Uh, but with the current development, uh, uh, this amount has shown to be too small since all sorts of sensors, um, mobile devices, uh, multiple interface devices, etc., has ultimately led to an address starvation. And uh, uh, this, uh, this has not uh, been acceptable. So several solutions have been in, uh, invented to overcome this address starvation. For example, uh, uh, we have uh, we have a solution called uh, network address translation. Um, we we have uh, we have a solution called uh, use of private network addresses, a tighter control of internet registries, uh, network renumbering of existing networks, etc. There were there are many solutions. Even a new IP version IP version six has been developed with a much larger address capacity, but still. Uh, uh, the the earlier IP uh, IP version four is being used because because uh, so many devices depend on the stability of the protocol's address space and uh, that in fact no one knows of course exactly what happens if suddenly the software started to use IP version six so uh, uh, the purpose of telling this is that the IP address issue is just one of the many examples of the complexity of the network of networks. Uh, which you can see in the figure, and uh, how networks even today are challenged by more or less invisible problems. Therefore, once again, uh, we could ask the, uh, the question to ourselves that uh, um, do, we, uh, do we trust these networks to serve as communication media for mission critical applications, such as the smart grid applications, or uh, do we dare to let the, uh, this uh, this patchwork of networks or the software patches, numerous of standards uh, standards or the protocols and configurations to be bearing part of, uh, of the critical life depending elements such as electricity or uh, water or health in our everyday life. Because on top of these applications, uh, it's not only these applications that are to be uh, sent or received or use the internet services, they will be surely 
other applications using the network, for example, uh, the web browsing, video streaming, emails, online games, etc. So, uh, so the question is, why should these critical applications use the same uh, same network? <laughs> for example, cars uh, and airplanes have several dedicated internet internal communication networks. So as not to mix the application traffic with the real time critical data traffic. Well, the, the answer is that the time and effort, uh, the time uh, effort, as well as the cost of deploying the internet uh, as it is today is immense. And deploying a separate network for each of the applications that is envisioned for the smart grid applications does not appear to be a very attractive, attractive solution uh, if, um, if, if we somehow are able to uh, ensure uh, the the existing infrastructure can support the requirements of of the critical applications. However, um, the the complexity and heterogeneous nature of communication due to the legacy systems requires interoperability and the standards. So this leads to uh, leads us to see how this is being addressed in the smart grids as an example. So. In, in in smart grids, uh, the data from the consumers and potentially also from the power grid infrastructure is required to be collected for control purposes. Uh, this not only means that communication of heterogeneous networks, but also with a wide range of communication entities, uh, like smart meters, for example, uh, produced by different vendors. So today, the core purpose of the meters already developed is to uh, is to um, monitor the power usage, for example, uh, the electric the electricity bills. Although the uh, the data can also be used for is valuable for the utility companies in many other ways, but mostly it is used for the electricity bills. So in in the smart grid terminology, uh, being able to remotely read the meters is called automatic meter reading, AMR, which is uh, a part of the automatic metering infrastructure, AMI, uh, which means that the network between the smart meters and the utility company. So with an AMI network, the, 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 the monitored data from the household can be sent to the uh, utility company, which can use it to optimize their production of power and thereby Avoiding uh, uh, over and under voltages, under production, etc. But the, the the concept of AMI has been addressed in various projects, and uh, it has been it, it has been shown that using the data from uh, from monitoring systems can lead to the optimization of the demand and response. However. Uh, it is not clear that what are the requirements for the communication networks here for the AMI infrastructure. For example, um, in, uh, in several uh, research articles, uh, dedicated ADSL uh, communication lines have been used for, uh, for AMI in order to avoid human interference. And the purpose was to make, to make sure that uh, they have enough bandwidth for communication. But nevertheless, uh, the requirements for the networks are not mentioned. And implementing uh, dedicated communication lines for the smart grid communication is, is, is really very expensive and not a feasible solution for all cases of the AMI. Uh, and furthermore, there are, uh, there are other challenges in communication networks in smart grids. For example, um, uh, the, the delay in communication, as I already mentioned, the end-to-end -end delay, uh, the availability of the networks, and as uh, the, the not not to forget, network security is very important. For example, if the utility company is expected to uh, control the distributed energy resources, delay the end-to-end -end delay that I mentioned becomes a critical metric in the in the in the network performance. And the delay in the network will have a high impact on the grid if. Uh, uh, if um, if the the distributed energy resources are not activated or shut down on time, so 
some sort of message priority scheme in the communication protocol will be uh, will be uh, uh, critically required. Similarly, uh, the availability and reliability of the network are very important to ensure the grid operation and also plays a, 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 a vital role in the demand response. As far as the security is concerned, um, that is also very crucial in smart grids because when extracting information from the user, the privacy of the user has to be secured. Uh, the grid, uh, the the grid can also be vulnerable to terrorist attacks. For example, like if the control messages to uh, control various electricity devices are hijacked, what what then? So adding a security can have an impact on the delay, and uh, as as the messages have to be encrypt encrypted, this addition of the security layer will add add to the end to end delays of. Uh, uh, this whole communication. Therefore, uh, a proper mapping requirement uh, for the crucial infrastructure is is a, is a challenging task because the smart grid is a large, complex infrastructure with different layers of networks, which gives um, a diversified communication performance expectation. And uh, you may already know that IEEE and IEC have already proposed a number of uh, standards uh, regarding the communication in smart grid in different layers. Uh, one of the one of the most commonly used standard is IEC 61850, which um, which focuses on the substation automation uh, control, and uh, it defines the communication between devices in transmission. Uh, distribution as well as the substation automation systems, and it is, it is mainly used for uh, substation automation. Similarly, for AMI, uh, we use uh, IEC 62056 standard. We another important uh, standard I, that IEC has uh, uh, developed as uh, as proposed as uh, IEC 60870 which defines the data exchange model between the, the control center and the power pools, and it is used for inter-control center communication. There are several other uh, communication standards that I've also mentioned here, but, uh, but the problem is that the proposed standards uh, still have to be implemented and tested in many scenarios in order to examine the network performance. And there is still, a need for research in protocols that can deliver messages um, safely according to the time constraints specified by the different uh, standards. 